Hello, Scott Ed 2020. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm not actually in Scotland. I'm in sunny Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, but I'm really excited to talk to you today. And my name is Kate Jones, probably should have said that. And uh, I'll be talking to you today about retrieval practice. And this is something that I'm very passionate about, very interested in. And as you can see from my introductory slide, I have written a book all about retrieval practice. So hopefully I know what I'm talking about. And if you'd like to tweet me during the presentation, there's my handle, or I'm on Instagram, and I'll refer to my website, loveteach87.com throughout. So as I've only got 15 minutes, I thought I would focus on some golden nuggets about retrieval practice, what I thought might be really helpful, useful and important for teachers, because I know that's the theme for today, just great teaching in Scotland. So just to start off with, for anybody who is unclear about what retrieval practice actually is, if you haven't heard of the term, it's likely that you have been using this strategy in your classroom. It's also known as the testing effect. This is a definition from cognitive scientist Pooja Agarwal, and it's basically about getting information that students have already covered and learned that's in their long-term memory. It's about getting that information out of the long-term memory. Every time we retrieve information from long-term memory, it changes that memory, which should make it easier and quicker to retrieve in the future. And I often give them um, share this story about how I was in a quiz and I, I could, I was, tip of my tongue, I was trying to answer a quiz question and I just couldn't recall it. And I said to my friends, I know it, I just can't retrieve it. And my friend said, what's the point in having information in your memory if you can't access it when you need it? And that's exactly it. That's why we need to use retrieval practice so that students can access that information when they need to. So, my first question, I've got a series of questions. What does the research tell us about retrieval practice? Well, firstly, there's an overwhelming amount of research about retrieval practice, some from a, over 100 years ago, and then modern research from a few months ago. All of it's really useful, um, and all of it is basically saying that retrieval practice works, it's effective. And that's my first point that it works for students of all ages and abilities, and it's deemed as more effective than other strategies. And the research paper I usually talk about and reference is the work of Professor Dunlosky, Strengthening the Student Toolbox. And he's looked at 10 different revision strategies, and he ranks them in, in order of effectiveness with retrieval practice alongside space practice, where you spread that out, being at the top. And then lower down, we've got strategies like highlighting, rereading, underlining. So retrieval practice works whether you're primary or secondary. But we can use different types of retrieval practice with different students. So younger students, and this probably won't surprise you as teachers, we know this, they will require more support and more scaffolding. Um, I read some really um, useful research about this on the Learning Scientists website. They gave examples for, uh, about a brain dump, where, which is basically write down everything you can from memory about a specific topic. And where younger students might struggle with that is they may get confused, they may not um, retrieve relevant information, so they just need a little bit more structure and guidance and support and multiple choice questions of a good option for that. Um, there's not that much research I've come across about retrieval practice and gender, although speaking to the authors of the wonderful book, um, Matt Pinkett and Mark Roberts, Boys Don't Try, we discussed this and um, they pointed me in the direction of some research which said that girls are more likely to use retrieval practice than boys, and girls are more likely to embrace it. There, there's no research to say that it's more effective for girls than boys. The research just suggests that girls are more likely to use it. And anecdotally, I remember a male student chatting to me, saying, Miss, does it matter how I revise? At least I'm revising. And I said, yes, it absolutely really does matter how you revise. Whereas he had the mentality, I'm revising. It 
that's enough that's all that matters at least i'm doing something so that takes quite a while so we just need to encourage the boys as well as the girls but just make sure that they are using retrieval practice outside of school as well right we should use a variety of retrieval strategies um free recall like the brain dump is more challenging but it will be more effective multiple choice questioning not as challenging but it will lead to more retrieval success and we basically need to have a balance of that in our lessons a free recall and multiple choice and also tom sherrington calls it he says vary the diet mix it up i've created lots of retrieval resources like retrieval grids and cops and robbers adam boxer's created the retrieval roulette which is incredibly popular and that that's one of the things i love about retrieval practice is how flexible it is as a strategy that we can use in the classroom um, and then finally whilst there's not a huge amount of research into this there is research and if you want to read it and um, there's uh, it's on retrievalpractice.org and this was um, a study carried out at college in america basically students who were carrying out regular retrieval practice um, on the final test they felt less anxiety so even though it's called the test in effect and some opponents of retrieval practice say you shouldn't be regularly testing children it damages their mental health of course we don't want to do that their well-being is paramount to us but actually research is saying regular retrieval and retrieval practice becoming the norm can reduce anxiety and that links in with what i'll talk about as well um, in a moment about confidence so let's bust some myths about retrieval practice and if you think any of these myths are pre prevalent in your school i have blogged about this at love to teach 87.com and these are comments that i've heard from teachers either in schools or online and i thought let's just explore this so the first myth is that retrieval practice is not new at all we've always done it and you hear quite a lot of people say that and i do think there's an element of truth to it but at the same time, we do not have the knowledge and understanding of cognitive psychology that we do now and memory. And perhaps we didn't realize the importance of retrieval practice. So I would use retrieval practice at the start of a lesson, but basically asking about a recap from last lesson. And I wouldn't really go much further back than that. So yes, I've used retrieval in some way throughout my career, but I use retrieval practice completely different now than I did even five years ago. Um, we don't have time for retrieval practice. Again, I hear this a lot from teachers. My simple answer would be make time. Um, and I really don't mean that in a bossy way, but simply it's so effective. It's so powerful. If you're not making time for this learning strategy, I think someone needs to review or you need to review your lesson plan and think about what can go and where you can fit it in. And I've managed to make time and lots of other teachers have, and you will see the benefits by including it in your lessons. This one I hear a lot, maybe from students more than teachers. Why do we need to practice retrieval practice when we have Google? Um, yes, absolutely valid argument. I Google things quite a lot, but I would much prefer it if I didn't have to, if I could simply recall that information from long-term memory. Uh, Daisy Christodoulou's written a lot about this and the actual prior knowledge you need to be able to successfully navigate and use Google. Um, and do we really want a generation of children who are reliant on Google um, and not have a, you know, this, this rich knowledge base that they can access? So no, of course not. It's a silly myth, really. Um, retrieval practice is boring. It's kill and drill. <laughs> knowledge test not true as i've said retrieval practice can be varied you can have online quizzes different classroom activities i think retrieval practice can be really fun really enjoyable really engaging you know if you think about how people will go to a quiz as a hobby or a leisure activity there is enjoyment in that there's a lot of satisfaction in being able to answer a question to recall it from memory so it doesn't have to be kill and drill. There's nothing wrong with the knowledge test, but it's not just that. Um, and then this myth, I feel like I contributed a little bit too. Um, retrieval should only be used at the start of a lesson. 
In my first book, Love to Teach, I wrote the best way to start a lesson is with retrieval practice. And I do stand by that. I do start majority of my lessons with retrieval practice. And Rosenshine, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the work of Barrack Rosenshine and Tom Sherrington's done a lot of work on it, um, advocates the use of daily and regular review and recall. But the problem with this is that some people think retrieval should only be used at the start of a lesson. I haven't read any research that says it's more effective using retrieval practice at the start compared to another point in the lesson. And the problem with only using retrieval practice at the start of a lesson is we might not dedicate enough time to it. So yes, it's a great starter activity, but no, it shouldn't be limited to just the start of a lesson. So what are the benefits of retrieval practice? There are so many. Um, I've summarized some points from a research paper called the 10 benefits of the testing effect. It's a little bit of a lengthy academic paper. So I've just tried to summarize it as simply as possible. But this is the main benefit is that it works. It's a powerful learning strategy. Everyone needs to know about retrieval practice. Teachers, students, parents, governors, everyone spread the word. It works, it's wonderful. Secondly, this is also very powerful. Retrieval practice can identify gaps in students' knowledge. They've got an answer, correct or incorrect. You've, they've got this right, they know it. It's very powerful knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. So then they, that can guide their future revision. Will highlighting identify a gap in your knowledge? Will we reading? No, of course it won't. Okay, so this is really useful for both the student, the teacher, and even parents as well. It can lead to better organization and transfer of knowledge and regular retrieval practice in lessons can encourage students to use it outside of lessons, which is an indirect benefit. And what we need to do is make retrieval practice the norm, part of our established classroom routines. And the younger, the better, and it can become a learning habit. Um, and then finally, this links in with what I said before about reducing anxiety, but from a teacher perspective, regular retrieval practice has led to an increase in confidence for both me and my students. Uh, it's not, the research has confirmed everything that my classroom experience have, has confirmed as well. They, but they're in agreement with each other, my experience and the research, that it works. And I do certainly feel confident from using this strategy. And I know my students do too. But where can we go wrong with retrieval practice? Uh, some people argue it's just a buzzword, it's a phase. And, and naturally, as the author of retrieval practice, I hear that quite a lot. And Professor Rob Coe has also written an article about some of the pitfalls of retrieval practice. I think this is probably the main one, is where it becomes a tick box activity and teachers are doing retrieval practice for the wrong reasons. And we've all been there. I remember in my trainee year, I did lots of things that I felt were unnecessary or I didn't even think they were helpful for learning, but I had to do it. I had to jump through that hoop to get my teaching qualification, whether that's learning styles or so, something like that, brain gyms. Um, and retrieval practice shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be something that is just done for lesson observations or inspections. It genuinely should be a classroom um, activity and routine because it supports learning. Also, I think this is a mistake I've made. Not dedicating enough time to question design, instead focusing on task design. Now, obviously task design and pedagogy is important, um, but I've shared so many free templates on my website that you can just download instantly. That the task is generic, but the questions I've thought about very carefully within my subject. Now, very recently, I tweeted a picture of a multiple choice question I saw online uh, by a teacher. I didn't name and shame, but I was really angry. It was, a, it was an example of multiple choice question that was uh, not well designed. And basically, that's because one of the answers was simply a comedy answer. And it was a GCSE history question, yet you didn't need to study GCSE history or know anything about Weimar Germany to be able to answer it. Literally anyone could have answered it because the other answers were so ridiculous and silly. 
And then really that's, well, that's not retrieval practice then. That's spot and recognize the right error. Anyone could do that, even if they didn't have that information stored in their long-term memory. So we do need to think very carefully about the questions. And this links into my next point about getting the level of challenge just right. We don't want them to be too difficult um, because then we won't have retrieval success, but we don't want them too easy that uh, it's a wasted retrieval opportunity. Getting the level of challenge just right, the Goldilocks principle, is tough. So if it's tough for us as teachers, imagine how tough it would be for a student who's trying to create their own flashcards or their own quiz. That's why they need a lot of help and support and guidance and modeling from the teacher. Not providing enough time for feedback and reflection. If I was to have a version two of my book, I would have another chapter about feedback. Uh, this is something I touched upon but didn't write enough about. I think because we can just rush through the feedback, and just do the retrieval activity without dedicating enough time to it. With some online quizzes, students might just look at their score and not even bother to find out where they went wrong, where they were incorrect. So the feedback and the review and the reflection is incredibly important. Um, and then finally, retrieval practice can have a bad name. Some people think it's for pub quiz trivia, um, but it's so much more than factual recall. In my subject, yes, I will use retrieval for factual recall, but chronology, thematic uh, questions or vocabulary. The people who say it's for pub quiz tri trivia, they don't fully grasp the potential and benefits of retrieval practice. So just very quickly, I realize I'm talking fast because there's a lot to get through. I think quizzes.com, and this is not sponsored, I don't work for them. I think it is the best online quizzing tool. So if you are going back to remote online learning, or even if you're in the classroom um, and students have access to a device, for me, this is the best quiz. I'm just referring to the free option. You can upgrade it. There's lots of benefits from a retrieval sense, but also classroom behavior management because you can control tools and also for reducing teacher workload. I have also written a blog about this, explaining in a lot more depth why I think quizzes is so good and why I use it so much. So finally, if you're interested in retrieval practice, want to find out more, head to my website, love to teach 87.com. The last post I did was all about retrieval practice. It's a library of retrieval practice resources. It's got blogs, websites, podcasts, videos, and courses. Everything you want about retrieval practice is all there. And I will keep adding to it as well. Do check out retrievalpractice.org and the learning scientists, amazing cognitive scientists that share research and resources. Tom Sherrington, he writes about lots of things linked to education. Retrieval practice is just one of them. It's a superb blog. And finally, Blake Harvard, a US teacher who has a psychology background. He's written so many great posts about retrieval practice. I would highly recommend it. So thank you very much. There's my details. If you have any questions or any feedback, then please do get in touch with me. Have a great day, everyone.